Hi, and welcome to another Bruja video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you just how easy it is to use the Brew Hobby Act to make five barrels of your own craft beer. The Brew Hobby Act is an innovative brewing system that takes all of the control that was afforded through the traditional four pot method of brewing and puts it into one compact system. It takes up less footprint, it's easier to clean, easier to set up, easier on brew day. And uh, one of the major benefits of it is that it, uh, by boiling inside the fermenter, you're pretty much guaranteed perfect sanitation through the whole fermentation process. This is a major advantage over traditional systems where you have to use chemical cleaners and sanitizers. You're constantly flushing lines, using a lot more water, taking more time, and possibly risking ending up with uh, chemical cleaners and sanitizers inside your craft beer. So we're going to get right to it. We're just going to go through the process of making a blonde ale and we're going to show you all the different steps uh, that are required for doing that. First off, we have the five barrel Biak right here and we have filled it with our strike volume. Uh, it's just over 500 liters of water and uh, we've heated it up to about 73 degrees Celsius. Uh, we have the strike temperature being higher than our mash temperature because when the grain is added, it's going to cool it down. So with the drill and the mixer on the end, we're just making sure that there's no pockets in the grain, that the grain is able to absorb water and expand a bit and form a nice filter bed so that the wort is able to drain slowly through the filter bed and filter out all the, the really small particles that are in the grain to give you clear beer and keep grain out of the wort when it comes time to boil it. And we have the uh, return hose from the pump. We're going to be turning the pump on to, to Vorloff and to clear up the wart a little bit later. And we have the water level sensor here that goes in the side and measures the water level around the colander. And if the water level drops too much, then it's going to shut the pump off and it's going to stop sucking it out the bottom. And that's going to protect the elements as well as may, uh, helping prevent a stuck mash. The mash period is underway and we've started to circulate, run the pump. Uh, it, it draws wort out the bottom of the cone on the side. Again, we mentioned that we didn't, aren't taking it out of the bottom because the grain settles down there and near the end we're going to take that grain and put it back up uh, on top of the grain bed. The pump circulates wort out the bottom, past the temperature sensor and the heating elements and back up into the top of the mash colander. This causes movement down to the grain bed which allows for greater uh, carbohydrate enzyme interaction, uh, improving mash efficiency and it also allows for temperature regulation. After the grain is added into the water up top, sometimes it can be chilled at different, uh, different rates depending on the temperature of the grain. And so going down past the temperature sensor and the heating element allows for the wort to be warmed up. It can also be useful for uh, multi-step mashing. So the mash is complete. We're going to start to mash out now. We're going to start to raise the temperature. We've turned the pump off and we're going to get ready to sparge. As we lift the mash colander out and the water level drops there, we're going to be adding fresh water to rinse the grain out as we pull it all the way out. To heat our sparge water, we're going to connect our fresh water source to the jacket. So this is going into the base of the jacket. So we're going to be putting our fresh water into the jacket. It's going to go up through the jacket and get heated as it goes up through it. And then we're going to connect, disconnect the pump hose here from the return after we make sure we close the valve there. We're going to take this pump hose and we're going to put it to the exit on the jacket. So it's then going to go back in through the normal uh, wart return into the mash colander. So this is the return pump hose, so the hose that was on the, on the pump and we're going to put it to the exit port on the jacket. 
So as the water rises up through the jacket, it's going to be heated and we'll be putting then hot water into the top of the tank. So it comes up through the jacket, out this hose and into the mash colander as we raise it. When running uh, water into the jacket, whether it's for chilling or for now for the sparge water, always make certain that your, the pressure line of the water going in is regulated to not above 7 psi. This jacket is not meant for 80 psi or the other pressures that municipal water can sometimes be supplied at, so it needs to be throttled back with the pressure regulator and kept below 7 psi. We're starting to raise the colander so the wart is going to be uh, staying in the vessel. Uh, as the grain starts to um, expose, as the ward level drops, we're going to be adding sparge water to the top. We're just going to raise it very slowly. We don't want to rush the laudering too much, or uh, it can lead to a stuck mash and an inefficient uh, conversion. And uh, so we want to keep the basically the water level as we raise it, the water level in around the colander inside here should be within a few inches of the water level inside the mash colander. So as we've raised the mash colander, the wart level has dropped and the grain is starting to become exposed. The top of the grain bed is now at the surface. We're going to start adding our sparge water. We're going to add it slowly and just try to keep an inch or two of uh, fresh sparge water on top of the grain bed as we raise it uh, and then that's going to be go down through the grain bed and uh, rinse the grain. So as the grain gets above the top of the uh, vessel here, then the water level is going to start dropping. If you want to control the precise amount of sparge water, you can use a flow meter. Uh, and just put it in line so you can measure the exact amount of liquid going into the mash colander so that you're not going to overfill the fermenter for the boil. Okay, so the bottom of the mash colander is now out of the water. We're just going to let it drain into the uh, three uh, into the vessel. The boil temp, we've turned that up to, or the controller, it's up to 100% power, so it's starting to heat up to boil now. We'll just let it finish dripping out and then we're going to move it over and dump it out. Grain that has settled down through the mash colander is going to settle down to the bottom of the cone where we can remove it out the bottom port and put it back up into the mash colander. The ward is approaching boil and the wort has drained out of the mash colander and it's all in the fermenter now. So we're going to bring the mash colander over and dump it out into a bin and take the grain away. There's a little hook on the back here and we have this cable connected to the top of the trolley and we're going to connect it in there and as the, the colander lowers then it's going to tip it out so it'll be real easy to unload our grain uh, at the end of the brew. And that's it for dumping out the grain. It's much faster than having to rake it out of a traditional uh, mash tun and a lot less labor intensive. Just got to hose it out now and the mash colander is going to be ready for the next brew. So we've got a good uh, vigorous rolling boil going. We're, uh, as soon as the hot break subsides, which it is almost doing, we're going to be adding our uh, boil hops, bittering hops. We're going to boil for 60 minutes and at flame out we're going to add uh, some or a couple minutes before we're going to add some uh, aroma hops. So we've added our aroma hops. Uh, we've just got a few minutes left in the boil. What we're going to do now is we've taken the top cap off of the lid. We're going to raise the lid and just put it over the vessel. Not quite on yet because uh, it might foam up still, but we're going to put it just over and it's going to heat sanitize the lid. Okay, we've reached the end of boil. The lid is now sanitized, the hops have been added. 
We're going to turn the power off and then we're going to add uh, water in, uh, fresh water into the bottom of the boil just to top it up to the 590 liter mark that we want for the volume uh, post boil and going into fermentation. So we're connecting our uh, the chillin' water, which we're using municipal water here, into the jacket inlet port. Uh, remember that you need to keep the water pressure below 7 psi, so you need to have a regulator on your line. We're going to connect the inlet port of the jacket to the hose, and the outlet port where they're going to run to the drain. For the first bit of the outlet, you can recover the first 600 liters, your 500 liters you can use for your next batch if you have a waiting vessel, uh, or you can put it into a hot liquor tank for hot water storage, or you can dump it. So the ward is chilling down with the cold water going through the jacket, and uh, it will get it down to yeast pitching temperature. At the end of that, we're going to remove the protein out the bottom, it'll have settled down to the bottom, then we'll aerate. The aeration is going to uh, stir up the ward on the inside and make sure that there's no temperature stratification inside the tank. So we'll check our temperature sensor uh, after that and make sure that we're at the right temperature and then pitch our yeast. And uh, so that's it. And we've gone start to finish uh, an entire brew cycle with the brew hobby act. Uh, we're going to let it ferment out over the next two weeks and then we'll be kegging and uh, celebrating. Thanks very much for watching. If you have any questions, please send them in to us using the form on the website.